let's get going. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thanks for joining us today for an info session on Clean Energy Trust and our upcoming funding opportunities. Uh, over the next 45 minutes together, my colleagues and I will provide you with a brief, a brief overview of our investment program, as well as our diversity, equity, and inclusion funding opportunities. Uh, after we're done with our overviews, we will open it up to you for questions. So if you have any questions um, ready that are teed up or that come up during our session, uh, please pop them into the, the Q&A window in your Zoom, and, and we'll be sure to get to them uh, later on. Uh, but before we jump in, uh, my colleagues and I will do just a quick round of introductions. Uh, my name is Susie Spiegelman. I'm Director of Business Development and Partnerships at Clean Energy Trust. I've been with CET for over three years, and I work to engage our corporate stakeholders in our mission. This includes everything from organizing events like our annual Co-Invest Clean Tech and developing programs like our diversity, diversity, equity, and inclusion program you'll hear about momentarily. Uh, joining me this afternoon are Tony Zhu and Dilly, Dylan O'Reilly. Uh, Tony, do you want to give a, a quick introduction and then we'll we'll hand it over to Dylan for an intro? Sure thing. Hey everyone, my name is Tony Zhu. I'm the Venture Associate on the CET team. Uh, I work here on the investment team leading due diligence efforts for our investment program, um, as well as assisting our managing directors on our portfolio support programs to kind of uh, add value beyond just Sort of writing a check uh, on our investment side of things. Um, I've been with CET for just over two years. Um, I have a background in finance and I was working in uh, clean tech investment banking before joining CET. And then hi everyone, my name is Dylan O'Reilly. I am the program manager here at CET. So I work with Tony along with the rest of our investment team on diligencing um, our efforts for the investment program. And then I am also helping to oversee the new DEI programs that we're offering. I've been with the company for about a year and a half and I have a background in urban planning um, and environmental science. Great, thanks Dylan, thanks Tony. Um, so just looking at the attendee list, it, it looks like most of you are pretty familiar with Clean Energy Trust. So, so I won't belabor our overview. I'll just give you a quick, quick rundown of the work that we do. Um, so um, we were formed in 2010 to support emerging clean tech technologies from across the Midwest region of the United States. Well, we do this by making seed investments in a handful of emerging startups each year, as well as hosting an array of programming that's designed to support the Midwest's clean tech ecosystem. So some of those programs include student business plan competitions, reporting on clean jobs in the region, convening small and large scale events, and corporate memberships that are designed to engage companies looking to support the region. Uh, and of course, our diversity, equity, and inclusion program that we'll be talking about shortly. Uh, we are a small but mighty team of eight with expertise ranging from finance to operation to policy to tech and marketing and communications. Um, if you'd like to learn a, bit, a little bit more about our work outside of the, the funding opportunities that we're talking today, uh, please feel free to, to shoot me a note, uh, happy to engage, um, as well as uh, we welcome you to sign up for our, our newsletter and um, our communications manager, Amy, will be sharing information on how you can do that in the chat. Um, so, you know, without further ado, I'm gonna turn things over to Tony. He's gonna tell you a little bit more about our investment program. And then uh, Dylan will share a little bit more about our DEI initiatives. So, so Tony, the, the floor is yours. Just let me know when you want me to move forward on my slides. Sounds good, thanks Susie. So first things first, uh, our upcoming spring investment cycle application deadline is two Mondays from now on February 15th. Uh, we have a really simple sort of application portal on our website at cleanenergytrust.org slash apply. Um, all you need to do is submit a pitch deck and some information about uh, yourself and your company and we'll, we'll get back to you within uh, two to three weeks. Um, so kind of diving in a little bit, uh, Susie, next slide. Um, so a, a little bit of background on our investment, investment program. We've been investing in startups since 2014, and we've made investments into 35 uh, different startups all across the, the broader sort of clean tech umbrella. Um, next slide. 
Um, these are some statistics on our portfolio. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these, but one thing I do want to highlight is that, like I said before, we want to be a value added investor for you all uh, beyond just writing a check. Um, we support our portfolio company entrepreneurs and founders beyond um, kind of just giving them money and walking away. We like to um, help uh, in sort of business decisions and strategic decisions. Um, we, we take a very hands-on approach to the extent that uh, founders um, seek our help. And one of the things that we do that has brought a lot of value to our companies is uh, our structured fund fundraising program where we help our portfolio companies raise follow-on rounds of capital after we've come in. Um, this is usually sort of the first large institutional round that a company raises. And um, we essentially run a sort of investment banking advisory program free of charge for our portfolio companies to, to help them raise that next round. And a, re a result of that is that um, we're able to sort of leverage our expertise into delivering um, a, a sort of multiple on our funding. Um, so in the number in the bottom left, the $28 of follow on funding per $1 CNT investment, um, that's something we're really proud of. That means that for every dollar that we've invested into our portfolio companies, we've gone on to help them raise an additional $28, uh, which is very significant um, from the early stage startup perspective. Next slide. Um, so I know some of you might be wondering what sort of specific technologies or, or sectors we might be looking at or uh, might be interested in investing in. We invest across the broad spectrum of clean tech. Um, we don't have a specific sort of technology or industry that we're, um, that we're specifically interested in looking at this cycle. Um, we're excited about everything that falls within clean tech and sustainability, um, anything that might fall into these broad buckets, um, we're happy to look at. Um, and our investment track record has shown that we've, we've also invested across um, each of these five buckets as well. Next slide. So um, as I said before, if you're interested in applying, we have an application portal online. Uh, here's the link, cleanenergytrust.org slash apply. Um, very simple, very quick application. Um, submitting a pitch deck and some information on the company. We, we get back with an initial decision um, within two to, three, two to three weeks on whether or not we'd like to move forward with due diligence. After that, we go into um, kind of deeper level due diligence with the team and we ask that you submit um, further materials such as a, a video pitch and, um, and some, other, uh, some other things as well. Um, uh, next slide, Susie. So uh, next, now I'll pass it off to, to Dylan to talk about some of our uh, grant award opportunities as well that are coming online. Sure, thanks, Tony. Um, so yeah, we are super excited this year to be expanding um, our diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at CET. Uh, we have two awards open right now, which are the US Bank Foundation Clean Tech Inclusion Award and the NICOR Gas Multicultural Innovator Award. Both of those close on March 1st. Susie, next slide. So like I said, we're proud to offer these multiple um, opportunities that are targeted towards women um, and folks who identify as black, indigenous and or people of color and who are working in the clean tech space. We um, are trying to make a concerted effort to make clean tech funding more accessible and equitable for all. So let's dive into the each award. Um, so first we have the US Bank Foundation Clean Tech Inclusion Award. This is the second year we are offering this program. Um, founders who identify as female and or people of color whose work is aimed towards helping the environment create jobs and um, drive economic development are eligible for this award. Um, each winner which will be one, receives a $25,000 non-recourse grant from CET and US Bank, which can be used for whatever they think will help drive their business forward. They'll also receive 12 months of business mentorship from CET and heightened exposure and networking opportunities with both potential investor, investors and customers. Next slide. So in order to be eligible for the Clean Tech Inclusion Award, your business must fall um, under the following sectors. These include renewable energy, energy efficiency, smart cities and buildings, energy storage, and mobility and advanced transportation. 
companies also have to be located within U.S. banks territory, which is listed here, um, as well as on our website. There is also additional criteria for this award. I won't get into all of the nitty gritty, but it's all clearly listed on our website. And I'm also happy to take conversations offline and answer any questions people might have. Um, Susie, next slide. So the next is the NICOR Gas Multicultural Innovator Award. This is the first time we are offering this award in partnership with NICOR Gas. We're very excited about it. Um, so this award supports entrepreneurs who are making a positive environmental impact in Illinois. So this award is specifically for Illinois based clean tech entrepreneurs who identify as black indigenous and or people of color. Like the clean tech inclusion award winners will receive a $25,000 non recourse grant 12 months of business mentorship from both night core gas and CET and exposure to opportunities with both investors and potential customers. Next slide. There is an array of sectors that um, companies can fall into. Um, and then once again, companies have to be located within Illinois in order to be eligible for this award. Um, we've received some great applications for both um, award opportunities so far. It's really exciting to see the work people are doing. And yeah, we're looking forward to your applications and learning more about you. And yeah, next slide. Thanks, Dylan. And, and thanks, Tony. That, that was a, a great overview uh, of the, the programming and funding opportunities that we have coming up. Um, as both Tony and Dylan mentioned, those deadlines are are right around the corner. So if you are interested in applying, uh, we recommend that you do so sooner rather than later, uh, just in case you have some questions that come up um, you know, during your application process. Um, so, so with that, we're gonna turn it over um, to questions. Um, so the first question is that we received is how strict are the geographic requirements? Um, and, and I'm happy to, to take that question, um, Dylan or Tony, feel free to, to jump in if you have anything you want to add. Um, our, our geographic requirements are, are pretty rigid, um, particularly for the, um, the uh, inclusion awards. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, we're, we're working with our partners who have um, specific geographic territories outlined because they fall within their service areas. And so to make sure that they're um, providing the mentorship and guidance, uh, we're just trying to align everything uh, pretty succinctly with those service areas. And for our investment cycle, um, you know, we are focused um, on the Midwest region of the United States. Um, you know, we do outline what that region looks like on our website. Tony, is there, is there anything else you wanna share on what that region looks like? So uh, I guess just kind of like an overview of, the, of that region. We go uh, roughly as far west as Colorado and as far east as Pittsburgh and as far south as Tennessee. Um, there are some sort of gray areas in there if you're, if you're, if you're close to the edge of that and, and wanna kind of um, just figure out if you're eligible, feel free to, to reach out to anyone on the team and we'll, um, we'll, we're happy to review your application and, and kind of take your information. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions on that, um, feel free to reach out. Thanks, Tony. Uh, the, the next question that came in is, is there just one grant selected for the US Bank Foundation Award? And the answer to that is yes, there is one grantee selected for both the US Bank and the NICOR Awards each. So that means two grants overall, one, one for each grants program. Um, we, you know, we do this on an annual basis. So if your organization is not selected this year, you know, we highly do encourage folks to apply year after year um, because these are recurring programs. Um, Tony, the next question is for you. Are your investments made as priced equity rounds? We, we are relatively flexible in sort of the type of investment uh, round that we join. We have joined priced equity rounds in the past. We typically, if we're making sort of a one-off investment, we will do um, a convertible note most of the time, um, but we're, we're flexible and uh, depending on your situation, you can uh, take a look at what round you're looking to rate. Thanks, Tony. Um, the next question is, um, 
do you fund a POC project for solar thermal storage energy in association with NREL or Colorado? Um, and, and the answer to that is yes, we, we would consider that application because that do, Colorado does fall within U.S. Bank's service territory. So uh, we do encourage you to visit our website and, and make that application. Um, the follow-up question I think to that was, do you help startups to set set this NREL collaboration. Uh, I'm I'm not quite sure what what that question means. Can you can you clarify on that? Um, and while we're waiting on a on a clarification there, um, we received another question. Um, would a remote friendly digital only location agnostic startup be eligible for investment? And Tony, that is for you. So you know would a remote company be in interesting? Yeah, so I guess from the geography perspective, what we're really looking for is for a, a core team to be within the Midwest and uh, with a focus on sort of, you know, bringing jobs into the Midwest, bringing investment dollars into the Midwest. Um, it's not kind of a um, an all-encompassing restriction. So um, like I said before, we're happy to take a look at your specific situation. Feel free to apply and then we'll, we'll get back to you with more information on that. And then if you have any questions, uh, beyond that, feel free to reach out as well. Thanks, Tony. Um, so we got a little more clarity on the NREL. Um, you know, please, please feel free to email us. Um, I think Amy put my email address in the text. Um, I'm happy to, to take that conversation offline. Uh, another question that we received for Tony is, how close do the companies have to be to generating revenues for you to invest? So this is on a sort of case-by-case -case basis, but we're, we're comfortable investing, coming in as the first um, external investor all the way up to generally series A is, is the point at which um, the, the company maybe becomes a little too far along for us to invest in. So revenue wise, it really, really depends on what, what the company is and, and what kind of technology or business model you're looking at. Um, but we, we've invested in companies before at a pre-revenue stage as well as a, uh, a revenue generating stage. So um, just feel free to apply and then um, we'll, we'll take your case on. Hey, thanks, Tony. Amy, um, if you are listening, we got a fun question on our logo. Uh, what is our logo? Can you provide the overview? Um, you'll explain it a lot better than I will um, in the chats. That'd be very helpful. And while we're waiting for, for her to do that, um, Tony, a question for you um, that came through during registration was, um, what is your, your, your pitch deck review process? Um, Sure. So uh, kind of an overview of our investment process as a whole, after you submit your pitch deck and other materials through our application portal, um, we'll take a couple of weeks to review it and we'll get back with, get back to you with um, kind of a move forward or, or pass on um, onto the next stage where we'll ask that you submit a video pitch, which is basically a five minute elevator pitch. Um, after that, the next stage would be to set up a, a webinar where um, you'll kind of pitch to us live in a 30 minute session. We'll ask you some questions and dig in more on the business. And then beyond that um, is more of a sort of ad hoc process where we'll reach out to, um, to you and your team. We'll potentially um, uh, have some conversations with strategic partners and customers, um, that kind of thing. And then uh, we'll kind of move forward beyond that to um, digging more into the deal and um, potentially moving forward with an investment. Thanks, Tony. Um... You know, you talked a little bit about the technologies that we're interested in, and we're, we're fairly technology agnostic within the clean tech sector. Um, but are there any specific areas that you're most interested in? I have some uh, personal technology areas that I'm most interested in, which I'm happy to take offline. But for our, in terms of our investment program, um, we don't have any specific um, sort of themes that we're that we're um, kind of looking to to invest in specifically this year or this cycle. Um, that said, we we have seen um, certain trends within the clean tech industry that uh, it, just in terms of kind of the, the number of applications and the type of applications that we come in, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't dictate sort of what uh, we invest in. 
Great, great, thank you. Um, another question for you. Um, can, can you provide a little more detail on what support CET provides um, to, to, the, to each team uh, to help them improve their strategy, their pitch decks for additional funding, um, any sort of market research or business development tools we might be providing? I think, I think this question is just try, generally thinking about what are the resources we provide in addition to funding? Yeah, so I would say we're we're generally sort of um, available as a resource to all of our portfolio companies for um, whatever sort of issues they might be they might need our help with. Um, the most common way that we help is through pitch coaching, um, where we help our companies develop their pitch for potentially um, other investors, um, kind of grant competitions and startup competitions, that kind of thing. We also help with fundraising, as I mentioned before, through a structured fundraising program. Um, in terms of sort of business development and strategies, um, strategic decisions, one of our, our uh, biggest selling points for our portfolio companies is our large network. We're very well connected, uh, both within our industry and our geography, and uh, we have a large network of, of investors, startups, and, and corporate stakeholders across the, the clean tech umbrella and across the country. We're happy to make any introductions, um, as you might see fit. And we're, we're always happy to help out our portfolio companies in, in whatever way that we can. Great, thanks. Um, we, have a, we have a question um, on geography again. Um, you know, this, this question is uh, particularly focused on emerging markets and supporting them. Uh, I, I would recommend um, that you email me directly. Um, as Tony just mentioned, you know, we have a pretty vast ecosystem. So if we are not able to support your work, we're, we're happy to point you in the direction of some folks who might be able to. Um, this is a, a really connected ecosystem. It's one of the, the best parts about it. Um, and so you know, we're, we're happy to, to you know, provide some, some guidance if, if you don't fall within our geographic area. Um, the, and oh, just adding on to that, um, or right, adding on to what Tony was talking about, about the support that we provide to our investments. Um, you know, I would also say, um, you know, we provide very similar support, um, to our DEI, uh, grantees. Um, you know, we, Dylan mentioned the 12 months of mentoring support that, that we provide, uh, you know, that can come in a, ver a variety of different ways, depending on, on what the winning company needs. Um, you know, if it's, if it's fundraising support, um, business development tools, you know, we work with those teams to, to help figure out what sort of support we can be providing to be most useful. Um, just looking through some additional questions that we have. Are the two uh, DEI opportunities open to startups outside the USA? Um, I think we, we, we spoke about this a little bit. Um, they're they're not. Um, this is this is geographic focused. But again, if we don't have um, the resources in house to provide you you know with service because you're out of our territory, we will ha are happy to make introductions um, or point you in the direction of folks who can help. Um, so I think we've made it through all of our current questions. Uh, we'll give it. Just a, a couple quick minutes here um, to see if any additional questions come through. Um, if, if we don't get more questions now, or if you don't want to ask your questions in this forum, um, we do encourage you to reach out to us directly. Um, we are all available to, to answer your questions, uh, tell you a little bit, of, a little bit more about the program, um, as well as the qualifications. So, you know, we, we welcome you to email us. Um, you know, we also encourage you to, to share share this information um, with your ecosystem. If there are startups that, that you are working with or that you are connected to who you think might be interested in either an investment or in our DEI pro, um, grant programs, um, you know, we, we, we definitely encourage you to share it with them. Um, you know, from our perspective, you know, the more organizations you know, we can connect with, um, you know, the more impact that we can all make together, um, you know, whether it's internally or you know, making those external connections to our ecosystem.
Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in. So I think we will pause here for today. Again, feel free to, to reach out to us if you have additional questions, I'm happy to chat. Um, I wanna thank Tony and Dylan for, for their time this afternoon. And I wanna thank all of you for attending. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and um, you know, reach out. And um, I see one, Oh, yes. OK, so the, all of our, our contact information, including info at Clean Energy Trust, has been put in the chat. So the information is there for you, and we hope to hear from you soon. Um, so with that, we will say goodbye. Have a great afternoon, and we will speak to you soon.